Hello everybody and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I have now found my oiler, my sewing machine oiler that I use. You may have a different style one, that's okay too. I like this one because it has a fairly long retractable um, uh, oiling spout, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what else to, to, to use to describe this little piece. If you don't have one like this, that's okay. You just need something that will help you. Uh, I have my flashlight on my head, so that's why it looks like uh, it's more of a strobe light. Sorry about that. Anyway, this machine is very clean up top. I mean, really clean. And basically, what I noticed is that, um, I think I, that's not even a dust bunny. I don't know what that is. Um, it's just dry, right? It's sat for a long time. So, again, so far, you know, you got to cross fingers because you don't know until we actually get it try to test it for sewing capability. But what are we doing here? We need to get things oiled. Now, the first thing you should always look for with a sewing machine is the manual. With most of the history of vintage sewing machines, the manuals are extremely detailed. They're not always illustrated well. Uh, some are better than others, but the detailed listing of instructions is really great because they expected people to do some of their own maintenance, even in the 70s. So, you think, gosh, how am I going to remember all this? Honestly, let's let's kind of start from the top. We'll just go from one side to the other. Again, we're not dealing with the side, not with the needle bar compartment. We'll do that next. We start at the top of the machine, and we'll just start from left to right. Okay, so I'm just going to put <clears throat> a few drops. Now, normally, when a sewing machine has been running normally, you're using it, or if it's been overhauled, or you know, it's been maintained. You only need one drop. In fact, your manual should really tell you one drop of sewing oil, okay? And if you get an extra, I mean, don't freak out. You're not going to hurt it. Do not go crazy with the sewing machine oil when you have a machine that is up and running properly. When you have a machine that has been sitting for years, like this one, it's dry, okay? So, uh, for example, I put probably three drops here, and I can always go back and add a little bit more. Don't add six and eight because you're going to flood the machine and end up with a really bad oily mess. So we're going to come across. Now you're going to see some grooves down here. These, that's a gear and it push and it rubs against another metal gear underneath this cam stack. That has uh, grease on it, not oil. Uh, some machines will call for oil, but I use grease on these. Uh, now, now you start to say, well, how, how, how do I know what else to oil? Your manual is going to have lots of arrows usually pointing, hey, you know, oil here, oil there. If Start with the manual, okay? Now, I've done these enough that I know kind of where I'm going to put them. And you say, well, how am I going to know? Well, it's not hard because this machine, oh, by the way, make sure this machine is unplugged. Do not have it plugged in when you're doing this because sure enough, you'll step on the speed pedal or the, the uh, foot controller and you're going to have the machine trying to run with you in it. Don't do that. Okay, so uh, I'm basically going here. Now what you're seeing me do, again, I'm putting more than I normally would uh, just to maintain a machine because this machine is thirsty, right? Now, another thing to do is take, I have my hand, my right hand on the hand wheel. And I'm just gonna turn it, go slowly. You know, you're not trying to uh, run a race here, but now you're starting to see certain uh, metal pieces moving against each other. Right? And that's how machines work mechanically. Now, that if you, if you didn't know that this little rolling cam needed oil, you would when you started turning it. Let's look over here. We have an oiling point here, a couple of drops, and let's put this closer to you. And I'm going to put one here, a couple here and here, and to the left and right. Why did I do that? Because this piece is moving against the, this uh, sort of U-shaped uh, shaft, if you will, right? And there's also, I believe there's a spot right here we can actually oil there. And again, it'll just kind of, it'll work itself in. These machines do not have oil reservoirs or sumps, as they are sometimes called. So do not pour a bunch of oil in here because you will create a mess and, and, and you won't be happy. And the machine won't either because the machine doesn't need that. All right. Now, uh, what else can we do? You can you can, as long as your machine knob is moving, mine is, right? Notice when I turn the knob, I start to see other pieces down here move, right? Because they're supposed to, right? That's what the knob is doing. So when I see something moving, I'm going to see where it moves. 
and I can tell that it's moving against another piece of metal. So I start to oil, right? And, and even though you might say, well, gosh, I can't get right in front of it. No, but you can get close enough to see what's moving and that oiling spout really helps me. Now let me turn this. We'll see if we can't get an even better vertical. It's like a bird's eye view I'm trying to give you because this is how I look at the machine when I'm trying to get it oiled. Uh, let's see if I can get my perspective here a little bit better for you. All right. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to touch the lower knob and see what that's doing. That's moving something else, right? So let me get to this. Uh, let's see. Okay, this knob. There's a there's a, a lever, a lever, uh, a center part of this knob. I was turning the outer ring before. Now I'm going to turn the center. Now notice. See all the movement I'm getting, right? That's normal. And like, hey, now I can start to see things uh, moving against each other, and I'm going to oil. And you're looking for seams, gaps in pieces of steel that are moving. And what this is going to do is that when you actually start sewing with it and you're asking it to do all of its magic, it won't hesitate, right? It won't, um, it won't complain, right? Now I'm putting oil here. Why? Because I know that this, this moves. Let's change our angle a little bit more. Now you can see this piece is moving, right? So I've got some oil there and it had some originally. Again, it's just been sitting. <clears throat> and you know don't stress this you know go in here and start oiling a couple of drops in these different places you should be able to get all of these areas and if you miss one the machine will talk to you you'll, you'll notice certain if you notice a certain stitch or a uh, a function the machine has is not do, working as smoothly as you think it should well you'll know right uh, it'll talk to you and then you'll say, oh, I have to find out where that, where is the inner piece of that, um, where is the inner piece, uh, where is the mechanical piece attached to the, the function on the knob I need, and you can start looking at that. So one of the things I notice is, oh, okay, my reverse knob is uh, kind of stuck. It doesn't want to move. Let's make sure that I don't, I'm not missing a setting or something. Aha, uh -huh. so I'll show that to you vertically in a moment. Uh, it's not stuck, but it was, it was actually, I had a setting to change, right? I couldn't see it because I, I don't have eyes in my knees here. Uh, now, what am I trying to do at this point? I basically want to come in here. If I can get this to hold still for a moment. Now, this little piece here, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a, hmm, let's see, what am I trying to see what you're seeing? Okay, right here, when I, when I move the reverse piece, there's a, uh, let's see. Don't think that's showing up very well on the camera for you guys. Um, getting a phone, getting any camera to get down into the inside of a machine is a very strange, very strange uh, thing to attempt, but all right. Okay, you see that little area straight down. It's got a little brass. Uh, I'm going to move it and you'll see it. You see me doing that? I'm moving the reverse lever and it's turning this, okay? So what am I going to do? I want to put a drop of oil right where it, it pushes up against the, the, the front wall of the machine. Again, it's not like a, it's not a super uh, tight gap there. But again, I'm just going around looking for pieces that seem to want to move against each other so that they are lubricated. Sometimes when you move something like the reverse lever, you start to see things. You can't always tell what's supposed to move and not until you start moving your knobs. And again, that only works when you do not have something stuck. If you have something that is fighting you, you need to unstick it before you start doing what you see me doing because you don't want to, again, cause damage. 
These machines are not delicate. They are robust. In fact, they're, they're some of the strongest consumer items I've ever seen. But remember what I've said, if something has been sitting for years and it is stuck, do not try to force it because it won't forgive you. Now, I've got this lower uh, control dial and I'm gonna turn it and you can see certain things want to move when I do that. And again, I'm getting gravy here. This machine so far has been very kind to me. It's not, it's not particularly uh, stubborn. And again, I just, sometimes you get lucky and a machine is, has been cared for pretty darn well, even when it hasn't been used. And I really like when machines get used. They, they like it. Machines do not like to sit. It's not, it's not a, not a good thing for a machine. Okay. So let's see here. What else can we show? I'm going to go ahead and open up the side or the needle bar door on the left side. And a lot of times we talk about this area from the side and that's appropriate, of course, but what about from above, right? Don't forget that you can see things that you need to lubricate from the top as well. So now again, I'm turning my hand wheel and notice I'm getting you see the little holes? There are little holes that you can you can uh, add, again, just a drop in those holes because they only will hold a drop. But notice I'm getting in the little grooves, the slots between these moving parts. That's important because this machine, don't forget that if your machine has not been maintained and you haven't oiled it and you try to, to, to do work with it, what's going to happen is your machine's going to work a lot harder to just move than it needs to. And you want the power of that machine focused on your sewing and not on just trying to get itself moving, right? Now, I'm trying to get some clearance here so you can see uh, there's something I want to show. Let's bring it up. Okay. Right here is that, that's the side rod. That's the, that's the uh, shaft that the machine is going to move back and forth in its zigzag motion. I haven't tried to make the zigzag work yet, but I've got some oil there. So we're getting ready. We're getting it ready to, to, to test out what it can do. Some of you, some of my viewers have been so kind to share information. Some of you bought these machines new and I envy you so much because you got to use a machine uh, that is still just an amazing, amazing piece of industrial design and engineering. Um, just because of the sheer quality of it. Now, remember, I've already vacuumed out this area. If you do not vacuum before you do this oiling, you will be unhappy because then your oil is going to stick to your dust and now you have a mucky mess to clean up. Again, uh, you, you know, do it one step at a time. Uh, let's see, I'm going to get some grease for this little piece here. Okay, so I have this little syringe that I use. You can use, there are different things you can use. Try not to use cotton swabs because they will actually, the grease will pull the cotton fibers off and you'll end up with another mess. But I'm just gonna take some grease here. And, whoops, and I'm just gonna put a little bead right like that, like if I was, uh, a play, you know, like the way you make a bead of caulk. And I'm just gonna turn it around and let it spread. And I'll probably do another one here, right? And as it comes around, it's going to engage. There is a gear uh, that has uh, grooves in the opposite direction. And as soon as these two gears touch, now we have grease coming around, right? And it just spreads itself. It's like when you put oil on a screw at the tip and you screw it in, it, it kind of spreads the, uh, the grease around. And that's all, that's all I need. I needed to coat these, uh, you know, you can do one more, but that's it. And you notice I'm not putting a ton here. You don't need to have a giant blob of grease because the gears, this gear only holds so much, right? It doesn't hold a lot. And once you get it in there, that's good. It's not like the grease is, grease does not normally go flying around uh, and coming off. Uh, that grease, it should not have to be re-greased for several years, if not longer, depending on uh, how long, the, how much the future client that the, gets this machine for me will use it. But basically oiling is something you do a lot more often. And that's it. Um, think that's the only gear place I put grease on this particular machine. Uh, but if I'm forgetting, one of you will remind me or I'll remind myself. 
Okay, what do we have left to do here? Uh, let's see, let's get our camera shifted. <coughs> And we're going to take a look at the needle bar area. This is always an important area of a sewing machine. And when you are dealing, we're still, uh, still up a little too high. When you are dealing with a machine that can do all of these amazing stitches that this machine was designed to do, this area is even more important because not only is the needle bar going up and down, again, we're going to have sideways motion. In fact, I'm going to come over and, uh, let's see, I'm going to go over to, I want to make a wide zigzag. Uh, let's see, yeah. Uh, and then let's see, I just, I'm just looking for movement. I haven't tested any kind of stitch yet. Watch the needle bar and it should start coming sideways for us. Oh, wow. See, or let's actually, it might be easier to see it down closer to the needle. Watch the needle and watch it hop. Oh wow, it hops hops beautifully. Oh wow. Now again, I'm not ready to declare it done by any means, but the fact that I can get this zigzag motion with just, and it might have done it even without the oiling, but I actually came over here and let's see if it's gonna show up for you all. Because uh, what I'm seeing, what my, my eyes are up higher than the camera here. Okay. You should be able to see this spot right here, right? I put a, a drop or two, I'll put one more. Now that shaft is what the mechanism, the needle bar mechanism is, is uh, basically hovering back and forth on. And a lot of times when you have zigzag that's stuck, it's because that bar <clears throat> is actually stuck. Because not everyone uses zigzag all the time. A lot of people would just use straight stitch. It seems odd for a machine that can do so many things, but remember, you know, we often buy things because they, they have all kinds of functions and cool features, but we don't always use them. All right, so what else can I do over here? I have more to do on this piece. First of all, notice that, let's come back up. You will see up here, I think I need to come up even further, make sure. I want you to see the whole needle bar. All right, let's, let's do this now. Here's my needle bar, and I want to get it in the highest position right now. And I'm going to put uh, some oil there. I've got some here in the middle. And then again, I'm going to put some right here where the, where the needle bar uh, starts to come through the last opening in the machine before it goes down, uh, but to the feed dogs. Now watch when I turn the hand wheel, I'm actually, I just actually coated the bar. Did you see that? Because the bar, as it went down, took oil with it, and now I have oil in all these areas that I want to. Now, there's another area here where the needle bar, it keeps the needle bar from flapping around, and it's like, uh, it's almost the shape of a tuning fork. And you can see there's a gap here, and watch when, when it's, you see that moving, it's rocking back and forth in that slot. That's a place you need oil. If your zigzag is slow or lazy, it's usually because that area is starved of, starved of oil, or it is full of thick dried oil, and neither of those is a good thing. Okay, here's the other side right here, okay, of that needle bar area. You can see the oil just went down, and now you can see the, you see the, the zigzag movement. Now we're getting that oil in there, and the machine should be a lot happier. <clears throat> Don't forget, you may have mechanical pieces that point uh, uh, laterally, right now they're coming right straight toward us, right? So I have one, one right here, right? Lots of different pieces of metal move against each other. And you might think, well, I'd, I haven't oiled my machine all like this in years, and it sews. Yes, machines can do that. They are robust. <clears throat> and your machine will forgive you up to a point. But if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. If you really want your machine to last, be good to it. It doesn't require a lot of you. It really doesn't. Remember, the work that I'm showing you all, this is stuff that, honestly, you know, these machines were designed for maintenance. And once they're maintained, once you've got the maintenance going, you know, you're good for a while. It's not like you're going to be um, doing this every week 
or with every sewing project. You know, you basically just need some basic oiling when you're getting ready to sew. By the way, this is another pivot point up top because now this whole assembly that basically this this piece is is what your needle bar is attached to. You can see the bracket, and that's what kind of carries your needle bar back and forth, right? Your needle bar has to go up and down, and now, like I say, it's almost like a pendulum. It's pivoting up here, and so, of course, we want to make sure that it's happy and able to do its thing. If you do this, you should get most of these places done the first time you do it. If you don't, let's say you're like, oh, I missed the spot. Again, the machine will sew. It's not, you know, it's 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 not tragic. It's not life ending here. But um, again, there might be certain functions the machine has, and you're thinking, hey, that's everything's working great except this one. Usually, you can track it down, and you'll find the mechanical piece behind the control that you're trying to get to do something for you, and it's just waiting for you. It'll sit there and wait, and it might be sluggish, and it's going to wait until you have figured out. <laughs> that it needs some attention, right? So thankfully, these machines were engineered. They take a lot of abuse. Um, it kills me to see people not take care of them because that's how you get heirloom sewing machines. That's how you get heirloom anything. If it was built to last, the trade-off is, you know, new things don't last because, well, for one reason, they're not made as well, but they also are not designed to be serviced, right? They're disposable, right? Non-serviceable is, is a term you often see. Okay, what else can we do here? Uh, let's see. I'm going to turn the machine. And don't lay the machine on your plastic panel. It won't forgive you. The machine's heavy enough to, to cause harm. All right, we're going to come down here. And I should have shut my needle bar area door. Bad me. Right? Do that before you lay the machine down. Don't, don't, don't do what I just did. Maybe the best way to teach people is to show them what not to do. Um, now, just looking, making sure I don't have any more goop, any dust, before I start to put some oil down here. I don't see any. Now, I think I mentioned to you all in one of the earlier videos, I got really lucky here. Look at this, right? <laughs> this thing, I don't know, it's so funny. The rest of the machine was dry, and how I got so fortunate It'll help if I aim the camera. That this actually, this is your feed dot drop. The fact that it moves at all is shocking to me because they almost always don't. Uh, many of you may never use it, but again, I, you know, in for a penny. I, I want everything to work as it did because I, I need to know this machine inside and out so that when I find a client for it, you know, uh, it's rare that they, they have an issue. And if they do, I, I should know what it is because, you know, I'm the one who worked on it. So, and the same is true for you when you're working. Maybe it's just your machine. Okay, so I'm putting oil here on this little, uh, I call it the, the uh, sort of torpedo-shaped shaft here. And notice it goes in just fine. You say, well, why are you oiling it? Because that oil that's, that it's still working with is old. Well, you know, give it, you know, give it some love here. Good gosh. This thing, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, they're built to, to really really run with a lot of power but you got to give the machine what it was designed for and that's some basically long due overhaul service so what else can we do don't forget there are a lot of uh see if we can get the camera down a little bit more for you guys don't forget there are many many areas here that need to be attended to i've got a, this there's one back here right and then over here on the left right you got moving parts more moving parts Again, the more fancy things that your machine can do, the more parts it has, the more mechanisms, and that's, you know, that makes sense, right? Of course it does. Uh, let's see, I wanna make sure I'm not missing any moving shafts, and then we'll just come down. I typically just kinda of do it top to bottom when I'm underneath. That way it helps me know that I didn't forget something. So we'll come over here again. I'm putting more than one drop only because this machine has been sitting for a long time. Now, let's come over here. I want you to see this in a different angle because sometimes mechanisms on a sewing machine, they face you at the front. You may not see it. It doesn't look like anything, but look here. There's a cam follower here, right? So I need to get some oil, a good bit there, 
Because now watch, you see that as it rocks back and forth? So when you do this, give yourself a different angle of perspective because you're going to see moving parts that you won't always see just looking from looking at it uh, head on, right? Uh, sometimes once you hear people, me or someone else online, you hear people say this, I go, oh yeah. You know, it makes a lot of sense when you hear it. You think, well, why wouldn't anybody just do that? All of us, all of, and I include myself here, all of us, you know, Things are not always as intuitive as you think they are. Um, and again, sometimes you see me putting oil in gaps, in little joints where metal moves. If you see a, a sometimes you'll see, that's, a, that's just a screw, but sometimes you'll see holes like this. Those holes are there for a drop of oil because now you can get the oil right in here. There's a, you can't really tell them on camera. There's a little movement here. Um, what else? I think, think we've gotten about everything we need to underneath here that's moving. Now, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do a different video on the motor, um, but I wanna show you one area that this is not really part of your normal oiling routine. So when you just, let's say you have a machine, it's in great shape and you've been using it a lot and you just need some, you know, need some uh, more oil, that's fine. This is not an area you oil all the time. Where am I talking about? <clears throat> if you look, in fact, it might be easier for you to look. I'm even to lower this even more. Wow, having to really lower the tripod here to get down here. But I want you to see this because this is easy to miss. All right, think I've got it. I think I got the camera where I want to Well, I should uh, probably ask my my viewers to take drama mean before they see some of these videos. Sorry about that. Okay, so you see here, this is your shuttle area, right? There's a shaft that the shuttle turns on. You can see the shuttle sp uh, oscillating, spinning back and forth, back and forth. Okay, what am I going to do? This again is for waking up a dry machine. Right here, this shaft turns. In fact, there's a little hole here. I'm gonna put a drop of oil there. I think that's my oiling pot. And I can even come under if I want. And then you see where the shaft is turning. You can even put one drop of oil and I'm only doing one. Now why, did, why am I being more stingy with the oil here? Because this is of course an area that gets a lot of lint. You don't want a ton of oil anywhere in this area. In fact, you won't have to oil this very often, but it's so dry, I wanted to give it at least a little bit. And then your next, um, your next step is to be sure, even though I, did, I used very little oil, I'm gonna take a cotton swab, I'm just gonna mop up anything, and I mean any oil. I do not want drippy oil uh, anywhere in this area because it's going to be a magnet for lint. You're always going to have lint as it is and you don't want a magnet. Uh, many years ago in factories, in old uh, textile factories and spinning mills, they would oil the floors because it was it would attract some of the dust uh, that the people were inhaling, sadly. Um, but anyway, that's it. That's basically on oiling this machine. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you guys guess? I just realized I forgot one area to show you. Some of you have seen my videos on this machine before. You may have caught it. But of course, what, of, what about over here? Aha! Uh -huh. What about these pulleys that I've been going on and on and on about? Let's come up a little bit. All right. Now, this is one of those things like the shuttle area that I just showed you. This is an area that you do not oil often, you don't have to, it's not part of your normal oiling routine. But if your machine has not been given any love in years, as this one has not, there's something that you want to oil, but you wanna be very, very conservative with it, okay? Notice that this, this, this pulley and this little one are actually one piece, but they spin around this spot right here in the center, okay? Do not, Go crazy with oil here, and whatever you do, don't get oil in the pulley itself. Because if you do, you have a cleaning project. You may even have to take the belt off and use 
you know, it's, it becomes a whole other project because belts do not need oil. They need friction. They, the belt does not need to be oiled. I repeat, do not ever oil your belt or the pulley that your belt touches on. That pulley should be dry, and I mean nice and dry. And now, often you see me using alcohol or solvent to clean oil. On a pulley, unless you have the belt off, Right? If the belt was off, and I was, because I think I've done this before in another video, if I had the belt off, yeah, I can take my isopropyl, uh, what was it, 99, 97%, and I can clean the pulleys, yes. But if you don't take your belt off, do not use the alcohol. Alcohol or any other solvent, no solvent. I don't care what it is, if it's, uh, you know, Aunt, Aunt Jane's Magic Elixir, or whatever it is you see on the internet, do not put anything on this pulley. The only thing I ever use only, again, when the belt is off, is I will use alcohol. Why am I not using it now? Because alcohol or anything else will degrade your belt. These belts do not like any chemical whatsoever. So I'm taking a dry cotton swab, just a dry one. No, no alcohol, no oil, no nothing. And I'm just going to put it here. All right? I'm just going to kind of put a little, just a little pressure so it doesn't move. And I'm going to turn my hand wheel. And you can see it dragging, right? And if there is anything on this, I, I don't really expect to see much of anything on this pulley. This machine was, was loved when it was used. And I'm basically just making sure. Now, here it is, right? So there's what we got. What did we get? We got a little dirt. Eh, not much of anything. I can take the clean side now, and I can do it again. And again, this is something that... Uh, I didn't even have to do this, to be honest. This thing has great friction. It's doing great. Can I do it underneath? Yes. It's a little awkward to, to see. I can come under here, right? Try to get my fat fingers in here and not block totally everything so you guys can see me. And I don't know if I can hold it in that pulley. It's kind of a weird angle here, but we'll try. Do not let your cotton swab get, get sucked into the pulley with the belt because then you've got more of a mess. And I... Actually, I think most of what I'm getting here is actually not on the pulley surface. It's coming off another part of the machine. But let's see if I can, there we go. I'm having to bend my, I use these uh, paper-based cotton swabs. I don't like the plastic ones because I can bend these. And we don't need any more plastic in the world, God help us. So, okay, so I'm turning, holding, holding, holding uh, firm on that cotton swab and just turning Again, not letting the cotton swab be in the area of the pulley where the belt is. We, de we definitely don't need that. And, you know, there's some, there's some soiling that came off of here, but eh, I'm not really worried about it. And I essentially took this cotton swab and anything that was on the pulley I cleaned. Again, if I were changing the belts, I would take my alcohol. Now I don't even, no, almost nothing's coming off now. There wasn't much on there. Uh, and then, uh, again, since I'm not changing belts, Eh, I'm good to go. What's, so I kept talking to you guys about oil before I got sidetracked with the pulley. I'm going to take and I'm going to put one drop. Notice that the pulley is turning and it turns around this centerpiece. I'm just going to put one drop right there. Boom. You see it sort of flowing around. Okay. Do not put any more. In fact, now it's time to go in and mop up. Just that one drop went around spreading. So now I'm going to come back. And you say, well, why are you doing this? You just put the oil on. I just wanted the oil to soak into that drive shaft joint. That's all I wanted. It doesn't take much, right? Because there's not a lot of room in there. That's why you started seeing it running around the rim. There's not a lot of room to begin with uh, for that oil to go. But it, it's nice. The machine will appreciate it, right? And I've mopped up the excess. Anything I needed is already in there. And now it seems to be, you know. Again, if you don't ever clean your pulley, you may never notice it. Okay, I know I'm a, I'm a bit retentive about such things, but again, I want this machine to continue to be an heirloom, and that's why I go to this extent, and that's what essentially most of what I, you know, my clients pay for is, is the labor, it's the service, right? This is a, not a rare machine. Some of you said you had a bit of a tough time finding them, but um, it really depends on your market. Anyway, that, folks, is the quick... Uh, well, not really quick. <laughs> this, uh, this, this video is coming to an end. It's one of the longer ones. But I want you to see, basically, it took me, what, 30 minutes? And part of that was me yapping away. It took uh, just a, a fairly short amount of time to get the machine uh, dusted and oiled, right? Now, again, I haven't tested the stitching yet. 
and I was very lucky. This machine has been very cooperative. They're not always like that, and I have to, <laughs> I have to be honest, they, they are not. So again, oh, by the way, on that reverse thing, I remember I kept saying, oh, it won't work. The reason is because I needed to move, whoops, not that, come here. Okay, uh, I had the stitch length set to zero, right? The only time you would do that is if you were, uh, you know, doing free motion work or darning something, right? Normally, you're going to have it between the highest number and the lowest. And then, of course, the stitch, the reverse lever works, right? But it doesn't move when it's on zero because there's nothing to reverse. You don't have any stitch length. You might think, oh, no, the, stitch, the reverse lever is stuck or it's broken. No, it's waiting for you. No codes and beeps. you got to be the software. Now I have it all the way on the longest stitch length. And now I get lots of wonderful reverse play. So there you go. That was a little bonus point there. Sometimes even an old machine is not even stuck, but you think it is because you haven't read the manual or you haven't looked at one of my, how many videos do I have on this machine now? Anyway, all right, folks, that's 36 minutes and seven seconds. But that is the dust. Uh, you have now seen this machine be cleaned. Um, I will now be going uh you know going in and finishing up any cleaning i want to do outside and basically i'm going to do some test stitching and see how it does if the machine is not happy if there's something else it wants it will speak to me and then i have to come over and figure out what was going on with the client who the, per, the client the person who sold me the machine said it did not have it was having issues with tension either something's wrong with the machine or the user had something backwards and we'll find out in another video thanks guys